in, in studying your word, and we're moving into the history, the books of history, which are exciting. Thank you, and we we ask that your Holy Spirit be present and 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 guide Dr. Carter in this wonderful teaching that he always does. It's always anointed, and we praise your name for that. And we also lift up Brian Whitaker, who is not feeling well. We lift him up to you, Lord. We lift him up to you to for for healing that. He is, he is healed and he is restored in, in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Karen. I uh, appreciate your prayer. And, and, and uh, uh, we love Brian. And Brian, um, like many others, it's, it's his turn uh, um, to be sick. And we're not wishing sickness on anybody. But a lot of people have been suffering from this flu. I had it back in October and November. I took the flu shot. And I stayed sick for a month, but praise God, praise God. But God is able to heal. We serve a mighty God, and just trust the Lord. Just trust the Lord. Praise God. Okay, somebody's putting deer roast in the crock pot. Mm-hmm. That means, Dustina, that means, that means that Micah went out and caught and killed a deer. Is that what we're talking about, Dustina? Come on, say something. Hello, church. Hello, pastor. Hey, Dustina. No, that means that somebody gave us a deer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, praise God. Praise God. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Well, oh. they, the guy had given us some that he had already had wrapped and packaged and everything probably about three weeks ago. So that's what's in the crock pot. And he came in two days ago and had a whole deer and it's taking up my refrigerator right now so i'm waiting on him to get that process for me okay okay praise so god. the lord praise is providing so praise god now if you all dry some deer meat and make some deer jerky make sure you please send me a, a couple nipples please <laughs> yeah he he's excited now i think i'm gonna finally get that grinder i've been wanting now to make some deer burgers so wonderful he's excited wonderful Praise God. It's always great hearing from you and, and, uh, and seeing the Lord doing wonderful things in your household. Um, Amen. We've got, a, we've got some mighty testimonies among our family, and we're, we're all family. And I thank God that you, we all are joined together and are studying together. Hey, Michael, how you doing, my man? My man, hey. man, Michael. Hey there. How you God doing? bless you. All right. <laughs> Praise God. Okay. We're going to get ready um, for... Our study, we're looking at the books of the Bible, Old Testament books of history, and we're going to be looking at Joshua. We're going to go through Joshua through Second Kings. That's tonight's lesson. By the way, uh, tell your friends and your family and your neighbors, these studies are free. We do not... Uh, they, we do not charge them. But, but, however, if people want to take these 12 week uh, studies for three credits each 12 weeks, then there is a cost. So if they want to enroll in the Back to Basic School of Ministry and um, earn three credits, we'd be glad to uh, set you up with that. It only takes 15 credits for a degree. And so if you know people who are have started work on a degree and, and, and maybe didn't complete, we can uh, uh, set them up to finish their associate degree or their bachelor's degree or uh, even a master's or a doctorate. Praise God. We don't want to compete with any other ministry, but if we can help you to grow in your ministry, and please tell your pastors so that they're not threatened by this ministry, tell them we are helping to train the body of Christ. I believe God has a, a heavy anointing on me to, to uh, help train the ministry, help train the people of God, help uh, provide. I'm not, I'm not interested in a whole lot of numbers of people, not interested in building a whole lot of churches, but I want to help uh, feed the body of Christ, help train leaders so that they can go forth and do the will of God. And I see that happening uh, uh, God's given given us a vision of some great and mighty things he wants to do and uh, 
we got our eyes on Pennsylvania, Karen, um, that God wants to do some wonderful things. So uh, don't be surprised if we're fellowshipping together sometime later this year or early next year. So we just bless God. I just thank God for what he's doing in our lives. I thank God for what he's doing in your lives and and, uh, your family and your loved ones. And we just bless God. We, we're live, living in an age where uh, we, we don't have time for bitterness or hatred or, or, or uh, deception. We need to be real for God. Our nation is in difficulty. Uh, the nations are in difficulty. And God wants men and women to get on the wall, stand on the wall, do the works of God so that people can be saved. People can be saved. Many people are under bondage. And so how do you get saved? You get saved by receiving Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord and, and, and letting him come into your life. And then let the Holy Spirit do the changes. Let him do the changes. And so we teach the word of God, and, and, and we know that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And so we're, we're very happy and excited. I mean, it, it was lonely. I miss you guys while we were in, during the inter-semester uh, um, um, period of time. And Jackie will let you know, yeah, man, he, he missed you. He, he got antsy, and, uh, but now he's back in his groove. So I thank God for Jackie Carter. She's such yeah. a blessing, such such a joy. She's on with us. She will be monitoring the chat window, and any questions you may have, direct them to her, and uh, we'll get back to you later on. By the way, if you want to take um, these studies for credit, please contact us. Uh, chat with Jackie in the window, and we'll get back to you. And if you just want to take it for taking it, praise God. Tell your friends it doesn't cost anything. Only uh, we charge when, uh, if you want to enroll in the school. And we try to keep our costs down to a minimum, praise God, so that God's people uh, can get uh, all that they can. Okay, so here we go with Joshua. And, uh, man, what a mighty man of God. Uh, As I look at the book of Joshua, I am excited about teaching about Joshua. And then when we get over into chapter 13, we start talking about uh, perhaps my favorite character in all of Scripture, second only to Jesus, Caleb. Caleb, the man, Caleb. Caleb is such a powerful man. And so let's start with Joshua chapter 1. And um, we're going to look at, uh, study this book in this manner. Tonight's assignment is chapters 1 through 12 of Joshua. And to give you an overview, chapter 1 is all about Joshua's charge and his assignment. And also how the people answered Joshua when they realized Joshua was appointed and called by the Lord. They answered uh, Joshua. We're going to look in chapter 2 at Rahab, a mighty woman of God, and how her family was saved because of her faith and trust in the Lord. Okay? And so her family put their trust in the Lord. You know, uh, Rahab lets us know that there, there is no limit to the love and mercy and grace of God. Uh, God saved a woman. <coughs> named Ahab, and she had been a prostitute uh, living in whoredom, and um, God blessed her, and there, there, I mean, you can't get too low for God to come and pick you up, no matter who you are, so uh, no matter who you are, and no matter who you meet, tell them God's mercy and grace extends to every, uh, every area, every direction, and he loves people. God, God knows how far mankind can fall, and God knows our sinful condition, but he has provided a way for salvation for anybody, no matter what your circumstance is. Chapter 3, we're going to look at 
the preparation for crossing the Jordan. Wow. Hey, Israel, after 40 years, Israel is prepared to cross the Jordan River. That's the excitement of chapter 3. And chapter 4 is all about crossing the Jordan. Crossing the Jordan. Sometimes when I look at Scripture and study Scripture, I wish I could have been there. I wish I could have been a character on the scene. Chapter 5 is all about circumcision and what circumcision means and the meaning of the circumcision in chapter 5. And, and uh, we can even relate circumcision to today. Uh, we're looking at in chapter 5 the renewal of the covenant with God and preparation for battle. Chapter 5 is very exciting also. Then chapter 6, the tremendous, exciting chapter that describes the battle of Jericho. And every one of us has Jerichos in our lives. And so as we go through this book of Joshua, we're going to look at how walls will fall when we trust in the Lord. Chapter 7, Achan's sin. Achan's sin. Chapter 7 of Joshua is a mighty chapter that lets us know that 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 uh, disaster can come upon a whole household because of one person's sin, and 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 uh, chapter seven can let us know that you know the head of the household has great responsibility. God has a protection, a hedge of protection around a whole household, and if one person gets out from under that umbrella of protection by sinning, sinning against God, the whole household can, can be destroyed. Not only the household, but a nation can be destroyed because of one person's sins. A church can be destroyed. A ministry can be destroyed. A marriage can be destroyed. So chapter 7 is very, very important. We're going to talk about the battle of AI and how God's uh, calls uh, Israel to suffer, to suffer a defeat because of um, the sin of one man, just one man. And so we have a lot of responsibility on our shoulders, ladies and gentlemen. If you're head of a household or you're, you're a single mom or, or you're leading a ministry or you've got a job to do, we've got responsibility. Chapter 8, we're looking at Achan's punishment for the sin he committed during the Battle of Jericho. And then we see Ai being destroyed, the city of Ai, and it's spelled Ai, so we call it Ai. Chapter 9, we're looking at the people of Gideon. I mean, there is a group of people. I mean, these, these had to be the shrewdest, most shrewd, smartest, slickest people on the face of the earth at the time of Joshua, a group of people who had heard about the power of God and how God moved with Israel and how God uh, destroyed Israel's enemies. And so these people dressed themselves up as uh, wanderers who had come from many, many miles away, and they made themselves look like they had journeyed a long way, and they pretended to be, <coughs> to be uh, uh, strangers from a far distance, and they said, we have heard about your God and how he destroyed Og, the king of Bashan, and, and other kings, and, and we know God is with you. And so we just want to uh, be a part of this great movement of God. Wouldn't it be wonderful if your neighbors and your friends and mine, too, would join with us and say, hey, I want to be saved. I want to be a part of this great movement of God. And a great movement is on the horizon, ladies and gentlemen. Chapter 10 of Joshua is all about the defeat of the kings of the Amorites. And a lot of kings are, are organized themselves and align themselves against Israel, but God uh, 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 mowed them down one by one. Boom, 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 boom. We look at victories for Israel. Chapter 11, we look at more victories for Israel, victories over the cities. And then chapter 12, we look at the many, many victories that were won under Joshua's leadership as uh, God had brought him as, into uh, the scene as the leader to replace Moses and to bring them into the promised land. And, and Joshua's position was not one of, of ease 
Joshua had to prepare a fighting force to go and take that land. The giants in that land and the inhabitants of that land, they were corrupt and uh, an abomination to God, but God's people had to fight to take what God had promised them. And, and we can learn uh, as an overview from Joshua that we've got to fight for what God has given us. We've got to fight for our marriages. Ladies and gentlemen, Satan is out to destroy marriages. He's out to destroy households. He's out to destroy families. He's out to destroy this nation. He's out to destroy the nation. He's out to destroy the church. And God's people need to wake up and smell the coffee. Wake up and smell the coffee and get back on the wall and fight for what God has promised to us. Praise God. So we're going to move quickly through the book of Joshua, and we're going to uh, get fired up and, 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 and become a fighting force and to get back on the wall that God has placed every one of us on. We're going to put on the whole armor of God and walk with the armor of God every day. And when the church, hey, Karen Herzog, when the church gets in unison and in harmony and realize, hey, we're in this thing together. And then we stop fighting against one another, stop dividing one another, and stop allowing the devil to divide and conquer and deceive. The church can rise up to be the mighty, mighty instrument that Jesus Christ paid his, price, paid his life for on Calvary. So starting with uh, chapter 1, and before we get started, does anybody have any questions? Hey, Jackie Carter. Okay, well, chapter 1. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun. Moses ministered, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness uh, and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. God had given to Israel all the land. God gave the land that includes even present-day Iraq and Iran and even Jordan and even uh, to the Mediterranean Sea, all this land that the Arabs are disputing today and, and trying to destroy Israel. But God gave that land. God gave that land to Israel and, uh, and to Moses and the people. Uh, verse 5, there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. You know, when God calls, he also equips. When God gives you a plan, God gives you a vision, God says, this is what I want you to do, God is able to equip you with everything you need. He will put people in your life to help you to fulfill the vision. God will, God will solidify a family and, 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 and bring more into uh, the family, the church family. God wants his plans to be fulfilled. And God said in his word through Jeremiah, I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you. So when God calls you, ladies and gentlemen, hey, Brian Whitaker, you might be under the weather now, but it's during these times when we're under the weather that, that we open up our spiritual ears and, and send up our antenna and let God speak to us. Sometimes when we're, we're humbled and we're, we're down, sickness has afflicted us, these are precious times when we can open our hearts and say, oh, God, what do you want me to do? And just wait on the Lord. And God will show you things, and not only will he show you, he will hasten his word to perform it. God told Joshua, no, no man will be able to conquer you. Uh, uh, no, no man uh, will be able to overcome you. Verse 6, I love this. I love this, Joshua chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land 
which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Already God has given Joshua a vision. Be strong and be of good courage. You're going to divide this land among all these people. Now Joshua has the charge of leading three million people, and he's got to divide all of this land among the people so he knows a part of his calling is not just to take them across the Jordan, not just to fight some battles and win some battles, but also to divide the land among the people. And when we get to chapter 13 next week, next week's lesson, we're going to see Joshua dividing the land, and you're going to see a powerful uh, old man. He's an old man. He reminds me of me, an old man. He stands up and says, Lord, I, I volunteer. And God said uh, he, he was looking for a man, uh, and, and jo uh, Caleb said, I volunteer, I volunteer. And so uh, if, uh, if you know any old people who are looking for something to do for Jesus, you tell them to be online with us next week, and, 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 and God will give some old folks some, some assignments. And a lot of old folks need to get up off their, off their rocking chairs and kick those bedroom slippers off and, and, and get back on, on in, in line. I'm talking, talking to me too now and say, Lord, I volunteer. And you know when God sees someone volunteer and they're really serious about it, whether you're old or young, God will make a way. I feel fired up. I feel excited about being back in the teaching tonight. I just thank God for this opportunity, and we give God all the praise. Verse 7, only be thou strong and very courageous. God does not want any wimps, ladies and gentlemen. God doesn't want any punks in the pulpit. He does not want wimps. He wants people who will be, who will be strong in the Lord. And, 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 and we face... Uh, uh, we face great obstacles in the work God has called us to do. But God says, only be thou strong and of a good courage. He told Joshua, only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. And then he said, this is the key. This is the key to success, ladies and gentlemen. You want to make your ministry successful? Uh, you want to uh, make your marriage successful? You want to make your job successful? You want a successful church? Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left. In other words, the Word of God. Don't turn from it. Don't deviate from the Word of God. Do the Word of God. That is the formula for success, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, all the day long, ladies and gentlemen, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, even while you're sleeping. You and I, we ought to be meditating on the Word of God. That is why we teach our students to memorize Scripture. Write this, these Scriptures down on the 3 by 5 card. Memorize them one by one. Lock them into your heart so that when the times of trouble come, you'll have something that the Holy Spirit can build our faith on and, 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 and give you the victory. Verse 9, have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. That's the calling of Joshua, ladies and gentlemen. Moses was dead, and now God needed somebody to take them across the Jordan River. I mean, hey, the Jordan wasn't, the Jordan was full. It was overflowing at its banks, and God needed somebody to take the people. He promised the people that that land across the Jordan was theirs, and the Jordan River was say, oh, <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think the Jordan River was talking to them. And, you know, a, a lot of people during that wilderness experience for 40 years, one whole generation died because they let circumstances talk to them and talk them out of the promises. Ladies and gentlemen, please, please do not let your circumstances or your situation talk you out of God's promises. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. If God says it, he will perform it. No matter how great the uh, situation looks, no matter how formidable the task looks ahead of you, when God says, this is what I want to do, 
God will hasten to perform it, and all he requires of us is to be strong in the Lord, to walk by faith, and to trust him. Trust him. Trust him. Don't trust people. Trust God. Don't trust uh, this organization. Trust God. Put your total trust in the Lord. And so verse 10, Joshua called the people together. And, and this is a very important part of Scripture because then Joshua now has to relay to the people what God has given to Joshua. And so we have, we have here uh, a calling together of the congregation. Verse 10, Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the host and command the people, saying, Prepare you victuals. Prepare you victuals means get your food ready. Get your food ready. For within three days we, ye shall pass over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you to possess it. Can you imagine being in that congregation of Israel, one of three million people, and you hear your new leader says, say, prepare you victuals. Make those sandwiches. Make those, get those buffalo wings ready. Uh, 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 get, get, get that fruit ready. Get that water ready. Prepare you victuals because we're going to pass through this Jordan. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here's a Jordan River, a great river. I mean, it's overflowing. And the leader is saying, we're going to pass through this Jordan. That must have been an exciting time. So Joshua spoke to the people, and then he reminded the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh, and he said, Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God hath given you rest and hath given you this land. You see, Reuben and Gad and Manasseh received their inheritance on the east side of the Jordan River. That's the area they claim it was good for their cattle and they wanted to settle there but then God gave Moses the commandment saying uh, you can have this territory but you must go across into the new land and fight with the army so that the, your brothers and sisters of the other tribes are settled into their territory and once they're settled then you can return to your own homes uh, with your family and that's the instructions God gave to them. Uh, verse 15, unto the Lord have given your, until the Lord has given your brethren rest, and he has given you as he has given you, and they also have possessed the land which the Lord your God giveth them. Then ye shall return unto the land of your possession and enjoy it, which Moses the Lord's servant gave you on this side, Jordan, toward the sun rising. And they answered Joshua, saying, listen to this. This is what Gad and Reuben and Manasseh said, verse 16. All that thou commandest us, we will do. And whithersoever thou sendest us, we will go. That's the promise that they made to Joshua. Joshua, it's the same promise they had made to Moses. And the, the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh were very faithful in keeping their promises. They built houses. They settled their own people on the east side of Jordan. But now they have to uh, be a part of the army and lead. And this army, led by Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh, this army went into battle first. Whenever Israel went into battle, Gad, Reuben, and Manasseh led the army into the battle. Now, that's, that's really, that's a, a sermon right there, Karen. That's a great sermon. When God establishes us and, 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 and uh, establishes our ministry, we have a responsibility to help others to, to be successful. When God establishes your marriage, you have a responsibility to help struggling marriages. If God, when God uh, establishes your church, your congregation ought to have the responsibility to help other congregations get established. If God delivered you from homelessness and gave you a home, you have a responsibility to help somebody else who's homeless. If God has given you a job, you have the responsibility to help someone else 
who's responsible. Uh, uh, um, um, this is the way it is. That's the way the church ought to roll. And so the people uh, uh, from Gad and, and Manasseh and Reuben said they will consent to do what God wanted them to do. Okay, and so then Joshua sent out spies in chapter 2. He sent out spies to spy out the land. And um, they had the responsibility of going and, 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 just, and looking at that land and, and, and bringing back a report to Joshua and the leaders about the inhabitants of the land, their strengths, their weaknesses, their strong cities, what their armies looked like, uh, what kind of uh, water was in the land, and what kind of fruit and vegetation. And the, the spies went out, <coughs> two men, secretly, verse 1, verse 1 of chapter 2, go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into an harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. Now, a lot of Christians I know would have missed their blessing uh, if, if they were going out to, on, on a spy mission because a lot of them would say, I ain't going to that house. You know, they, they drink liquor there or they smoke cannabis there or they do this or they, they do that. Ladies and gentlemen, God can use the lowest person to get his will done, and God can pick up the lowest person and put that person on high. He can establish. So there's no respect of persons with God. And so uh, God had Rahab planted there, and uh, she was despised, probably despised, and looked down upon by her own people, but God used her to the praise of his glory. Not only that, but this lady Rahab um, because of her faithfulness and her trust in the Lord, as you'll see uh, as we continue in these chapters, Rahab was instrumental in bringing about um, uh, the birth of Jesus Christ. It was through Rahab's line, through Rahab's line, uh, that David, the king, was established. And David was a descendant of Rahab. And then Jesus being a descendant of the bloodline of, 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 of the of the, of the uh, paternal line of um, David I'll trace back to Rahab so uh, Rahab hid the two men and that when the army came to Rahab's house saying hey we heard two men were here and we're looking for some spies they've come from they've come from Israel and we heard they came here and uh, where are they then Rahab said uh, oh, they, oh, they left. They left a couple hours ago. But if you hurry, if you hurry, you can catch up to them. She lied. But, you know, now I, I don't condone lying, ladies and gentlemen. I don't say tell a lie. But she, you know, she, she uh, um, well, she gave them some fake news. You know, we're getting a lot of fake news these days. We're getting fake news out of Washington, D.C., from the Washington Post. We're getting it out of the New York Times. We're getting fake news from all over the place. People don't know what to believe, but God used Rahab to give out a fake report. Oh, yeah, they were here a couple of hours ago. They were looking for directions, and they went off towards those hills. And If you hurry, you can overtake them. And then Rahab had hidden them, verse 4, and the woman took the two men and hid them and said, Thus there came men unto me, but I wist not whence they were. When you read chapter, verse 4, ladies and gentlemen, You'll think all oh, this is sequ sequential, but no, no. Rahab took the two men and hid them, okay? There should be a period there and a new sentence and said thus, Oh, there came men unto me, but I wist not. I don't know where, whence they were, okay? So don't get this confused. She hid them first, and then um, when the army came looking for them, she said, oh, yeah, they were here, but I don't know where they are now. But she had hid them on her roof under some stalks of flax. And then she told the men, uh, go to the mountains and stay there for three days. And after that, uh, you continue on your journey. For by the time three days pass, those searching for you uh, will, out of, be, will be out of the way, probably back into the city. Verse 8. And before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof, said unto the men, 
I know that the Lord, listen to this, this is faith. This is what got Rahab saved, ladies and gentlemen, faith and trust in the Lord. In those days, people were saved by faith in God's word, faith in God. Jesus had not come upon the earth, and he had not died on the cross. And so many people were saved because of their faith. Go back to Abraham. Abraham believed God. He believed God's word, and the Bible says it was counted unto him for righteousness. Rahab believed God's word. You have her testimony right here. She says, I know that the Lord has given you the land and that your terror is fallen upon us and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. She testified, I know God sent you, and, and for we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt and what you did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of Jordan, Zion and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. Rahab gave a testament, testimony. This was a prostitute, ladies and gentlemen, a woman of ill repute, a, woman, a, low, a low life living woman. But God uh, uh, heard her testimony and she put her trust in the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, it is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. With arms wide open, he'll pardon you. It is no secret what God can do. Don't you just love Rahab? Praise God. Don't you just love God for his grace and mercy? And then she asked them, uh, consider me and my family. We know God has given you this city. When you come to destroy this city, Consider me and my family. And the men answered her, verse 14, Our life for yours, if you utter not this our business, if you don't tell our business, we will, we will save you when we come to destroy the city. And it shall be, when the Lord has given us the land, that we will deal kindly and truly with thee. Then she let them down by a cord through the window, for her house was upon the town wall, and she dwelt upon the wall. She told them, go up to the mountain, stay there for three days. And then they told her, if you don't tell about us, we will certainly uh, save you when we come to destroy the city. And they gave her a piece of scarlet cloth, red cloth, scarlet cloth. Put this in your window. Make sure this is in your window so that when we come back, we will not destroy your household. Then bring your parents and your brothers and sisters and your family. Bring them into this household. And then they gave her instructions. Tell them to stay in the house. Do not leave the house. That's a sermon in itself, ladies and gentlemen. Stay in the household of faith. Don't take a chance uh, with adultery. Don't take a chance with alcohol. Don't take a chance with drugs. Don't take a chance gambling. Stay in the house. Stay in the fold. Don't take a chance uh, dealing with witches and, and, and warlocks. Don't entertain demons. Stay in the house. I mean, I could preach a sermon right on there. Stay where you're supposed to be. Tell your family to stay indoors until we do what we have to do. Verse 22, And they went and came unto the mountain, and abode there three days until the pursuers were returned, and the pursuers sought them throughout all the way, but found them not. Okay? And later on you'll see that during the battle of Jericho, Rahab and her family were saved. She put that scarlet cloth in the window, and they were saved just as the men had promised her. You know, uh, the men did not save her. God saved her. But you know, uh, we speak for God. We are ambassadors for Jesus Christ. God puts the word in our mouth. And if, if, we, if we will allow the Holy Spirit to use us, the word that we preach, the word that we teach, the word of our testimony, 
is enough word to get people saved if they will believe it. And you know, God will honor his word. God will, and, and you don't have to be bishop so-and-so to share the word of God. You don't have to be holy so-and-so. You don't have to be a pastor to share the word. God will honor his word as we speak the word to the situation in obedience to him. Okay, chapter 3. Preparation for crossing the Jordan. What a great and exciting time. And um, as they prepared to cross. Verse 3, And they commanded the people, When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, and the priests, the Levites, bearing it, then ye shall remove from your place and go after it. Ladies and gentlemen, these people could not visualize how God was going to open the, the Jordan River, but Joshua told them, when you see the Ark of the Covenant carried by the priest, and when you see the feet of the priest settle in the Jordan, God will open the Jordan. That's faith. That means that we've got to walk by faith, ladies and gentlemen, not by sight. Sometimes troubles come, and, 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 and we're trusting in the Lord, and we want to see a sign that the troubles are disappearing. Sometimes troubles don't go, but we've got to keep on keeping on pressing on in faith and trusting in the Lord. And God will hasten his word to perform it. Verse 5, Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. God told them, uh, bathe, find some water, take a bath, sanctify yourselves, and, and, and dedicate yourselves to the Lord. Tomorrow you're crossing the Jordan. I mean, that Jordan was not opening up, but Joshua spoke the word, and the people believed. Ladies and gentlemen, when you put your trust in the word of God, the Jordan may not look like it's going to open its mouth, but you put your trust in the Lord. Those troubles may not look like they want to go away, but you put your trust in the Lord. Verse 6, And Joshua spake unto the priest, saying, Take up the Ark of the Covenant, and passed over before the people. And they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went before the people. I believe that the church today has a very little and a limited concept of the power of God in the Ark of the Covenant. I believe the church does not really understand the, the, the fullness, the impact of, of the, the presence of the Ark of the Covenant in Israel's history. The Ark was a wooden box. But it contained uh, the manna, uh, a sample of the manna that fell from heaven, uh, the tablets uh, of the Ten Commandments, and Aaron's rod that budded. And that ark was a, a symbol that God was with them. That ark served as a symbol that God was with them. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we, we, we need to trust God. We need to trust God. This whole idea of a covenant. Uh, I, I, I don't think we really understand the fullness of a covenant, that we make holy vows before the Lord when we speak things before the Lord, and when God speaks to us, he will perform what he says, and he expects us to perform. So the Ark of the Covenant was a symbol that God was with them and, uh, and that God would fight for them. So chapter 4 they prepared to cross chapter they pre, chapter 3 they prepared to cross the jordan chapter 4 uh, and it came to pass when all the people were clean passed over jordan i mean from the moment the feet of the priests touched down in the waters ladies and gentlemen the Jordan River opened up, waters on each side. The Jordan opened up, and there was dry ground for Israel to cross over the Jordan. And um, praise God. Chapter 4, they crossed through the Jordan River, and then Joshua called 12 men, verse 4, and told them to uh, pick up a stone, and they uh, took 12 stones on the to the other side of the Jordan to set up as a monument. And then um, 12 men took stones into the center of the Jordan River while the waters were still evaded. 
and built a monument in the Jordan River to remind people that God had delivered them uh, 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 from the Jordan and God had brought them into the promised land. It was a memorial, that a remembrance that God had brought them into the land of the promise. Okay, uh, chapter 5. Chapter 5, we're looking at circumcision. We're not going to go much into circumcision, but all the men, after, you know, after the time of, of the celebration of crossing the Jordan, then all of the men in the, in the Israelite community had to be cir circumcised. That means that uh, uh, the foreskin of their flesh had to be cut back, meaning it was they were they were they were and they were God's children it was a sign of the covenant between God and his people. And so uh Joshua and 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 the men uh some of his leaders had to take sharp knives and and operate on the men in the, in the community and circumcise them. And this is the cause why Joshua did circumcise verse 4. All the people that came out of Egypt that were males, even all the men of war died in the wilderness, by the way, after they came out of Egypt. So the first group of men, the older generation, who were circumcised after they came out of Egypt, um, they died in the wilderness because of unbelief. Now this new group of men, this new generation who crossed the Jordan, um, they were circumcised, and that was to remind them of the covenant that God had made with his people and that the covenant had been renewed. Okay. Um, the rest of chapter 5 is preparation for battle. And verse 13, And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went up to him and said unto him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? This was an angel of the Lord, ladies and gentlemen. Be careful how you entertain strangers. You might entertain angels unawares. Verse 14, and he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord, am I now come? He was captain of the host of the Lord. Could have been Michael, the archangel. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto the servant? And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place whereon thou standest is holy. And Joshua took his shoes off. Chapter 6, Jericho, the, the battle of Jericho. Uh, to summarize this, God told them, Walk around Jericho. One time a day for six days. Then on the seventh day, walk around Jericho seven times. And after you walk around the seventh time, everybody's to let out a shout. Ladies and gentlemen, you know your noise can tear a building down. If you shout loud enough, I'm, I'm looking at Sandra Inman. Sandra knows how to shout when Texas A&M is playing some football, you know. She knows, she and Michael, they know how to make, make a noise when Texas A&M scores, okay. But imagine if all believers would just let it stop right now today and all the believers would just shout hallelujah unto the Lord. I mean, kingdoms would fall, buildings would fall, demons would flee. If we shout praises unto the Lord, there's power in the shout. That's a sermon for somebody. There's power in the shout. There's power in the shout. Oh, man. Oh, man. Mm. Well, my time's almost up. My time's almost up. But chapter 7, there was, uh, there, there was an opportunity to go into battle again after Jericho, and there was a, a city called Ai. It's spelled Ai. Ai was the city. And Moses, Joshua's uh, advisor said, we only need three or 4,000 men. We don't need the whole army. They're small. Just send up three or 4,000 and we can destroy AI. And Joshua sent that group uh, against the city of AI. And the people of AI caused them to run. Israel was put to flight. 
and several Israelites were killed in the battle, and Joshua couldn't understand it, so he, he, he stripped off his clothes, he threw sackcloth and ashes on, and laid before the Ark of the Covenant, and cried unto the Lord until evening, Lord, what did we do wrong? What has happened? Why were we defeated? And then gosh, God told Joshua, get up off your face. Get up. There's sin in the camp. Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of times things come against us, and we can't put our finger on it. We don't know what happened, but a lot of times stuff comes on us because of sin. Whether it's in the church, whether it's in your home, whether it's in your business, whether it's in the nation, sin in the camp. God has to punish sin. And so God told Joshua, there's sin in the camp, so cause Israel to pass before you. In other words, three million people had to come before Joshua tribe by tribe, uh, uh, clan by clan, household by household, until the Lord would have the one who committed the crime to confess. God said, there's sin in the camp. Somebody has touched the accursed thing. The accursed thing, meaning God told them not to take any gold, no silver, no artifacts, uh, nothing. Don't take anything from Jericho. But yet, uh, one man, and we find out later his name was Achan, and Achan uh, stole some gold and silver and, and some artifacts and hid them in his tent. And uh, when each family, when families came before Joshua, when Achan's grandfather and father and, and, and uh, Achan himself came, uh, the Holy Spirit revealed that Achan had stolen, and Achan confessed. He took gold, and he took this and took that, some garments and that, and hid them in his tent. And so Joshua had them go and look in his tent, dig those things up, and then God had to punish Achan. And listen, this you may think this is harsh punishment, but you know, sin can wipe out your whole household. Sin can wipe out a whole nation. Sin can wipe out, a, an, inter, wipe out an international community. Sin can wipe out a church, and, and, and God set an example. God told uh, Joshua, bring Achan before the, before, the, the, uh, um, before the people and punish him. Bring his family, his wife, his children, his grandchildren, their possessions, and cause the people to stone them all to the ladies and gentlemen, they were not just Achan, his family was stoned to death. You may say, well, why did they kill his wife and his children and grandchildren? And, and then you can also, also say, hey, like father, like son, uh, uh, God does not play, ladies and gentlemen. God does not want sin to perpetuate in our lives. And um, um, uh, perhaps it's because if Achan sinned, then his children would, would eventually du duplicate or imitate their father. I don't know. But the whole family was, was destroyed. Just like when Moses uh, put down the rebellion of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, when they grumbled and complained against the Lord, tens of thousands of people were put down when the earthquake Open, when the ground opened and swallowed up tens of thousands of them. God does not want rebellion. God does not tolerate sin. God brought them into that promised land and, and uh, promised to give them land that belonged to people of abomination who are bent on sin, who did not obey the Lord. And so, so you have some coming in to receive the promise who were not faithful to God, who would uh, sin and do whatever they wanted to do. So God set an example with Israel, okay, and um, wiped out Achan and his household because they had disobeyed God. The rest of uh, the rest of uh, the book, the first twelve chapters of Joshua, you'll see now the people going back against Ai. They fought against Ai. They defeated Ai. Okay, and um, they use a great technique, a great tactic. Um, the people of Ai were puffed up in pride because they had defeated Israel, and so here's Israel coming back. But Joshua's strategy was he sent a number of troopers 
beyond the city, and then he had, and he and his people let, went towards Ai, and when the, the soldiers from Ai came out after them, Joshua and his people started running in retreat like the Israelites had done a few days before, and the people of Ai thought they would defeat Israel again, and so the whole city started chasing against um, uh, Israel, and so the soldiers whom Joshua had sent beyond the city set the city on fire, burned up the city. The people of Ai looked back, saw their city being burned, and realized they were surrounded, and then Joshua's people slaughtered all the people of Ai. They didn't play in those days. War was war, okay? And so the rest of the first 12 chapters is all about the, the, the defeat of the enemies of God's people, with the exception in chapter 9 of the people of Gibeon, Gibeon, who disguised themselves as wayward travelers, and uh, they even had old, moldy, stale bread and beat-up shoes and worn-out clothes, but they were just locals. They were locals, but they made themselves look like they had come a long way to find this uh, man Joshua because they had heard about the great God who brought Israel through the Red Sea and, and the great God who, who led Israel into battle to defeat Og, the king of Bashan, and all the Amorites. And so they wanted to join up, and they deceived Joshua. Joshua bit the bait, they, and Joshua made an, uh, an alliance with them. And, and uh, three days after Joshua made the alliance, Joshua found out the truth that they had lied to him. But Joshua was a man of his word. And ladies and gentlemen, we have to be men and women of integrity. Be careful what agreements you make, but whatever uh, commitments you make, be man up, woman up. And uh, uh, I'm going to be preaching about that on, on the online church very soon, maybe in about two weeks, uh, how we have to man up. Uh, you made marriage vows. You made a vow uh, to your spouse. You made a holy vow before God Almighty to love and to cherish, have and hold, uh, and rich, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, till death do you part. I'm preaching to me too. We made holy vows. Uh, uh, we we pledge allegiance uh, 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 to a nation. We we uh, uh, our leaders have made a, a, a vow, holy vows, holy vows before God, the angels, and the assembly to uphold the Constitution. And so, uh, God's going to hold us to these vows that we've made. But that's coming. And so, uh, we'll be doing a little bit of that in the next couple of weeks on the online church. Um, to strengthen marriages, to strengthen the church, to strengthen our relationship with God. And, and God's going to remind us of the promises that we've made. And so uh, I hope people will attend, will attend the online church for the next couple of weeks. You know, sometimes, sometimes Sandra, when you tell them what you're going to preach, and if it's going to hit them where, you know, if, I, I've discovered that when I, tell, when I announce I'm going to preach on adultery, you know, the adulterers ain't coming to church that Sunday. You know, uh, 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 if I announce, hey, Karen, and Karen up in Pennsylvania, if you announce uh, you're going to preach on, about drugs, you know, those using drugs ain't coming to church that Sunday. I mean, we know how to, how to pick and choose our sermons and our attendance, but uh, uh, a lot of times I operate with the element of surprise, just surprise, surprise. We have a surprise for you. Well, where are you go? And and I remember years ago, some of my people, uh, uh, my congregation would say, "Well, pastor, what you preaching on Sunday?" <laughs> Look here, those of you who are pastors and teachers, if you have people asking, "What are you preaching on Sunday?" Oh, here's how they do. Now, Jackie would tell you, Jackie, what 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 is the, what's your favorite expression? My favorite expression? Yeah, when you want to know where, what, I'm, what I'm preaching on. Where you coming Where from? you coming from? Where you coming from, Doc? <laughs> that, that's what they say in the church. They, where you coming from Sunday, Doc? 
Oh, in other words, what's your, what's your sermon going to be about? Because they want to know, hey, if you're preaching about gambling, they ain't coming to church if they're gamblers. Or if you preach about alcohol and they like to drink, they ain't coming to church. And, 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 and if, the, if you're, you're preaching about adultery, they're not coming to church. So a lot of times I just, well, I'll just tell them, well, the Lord hasn't revealed it to me yet, and I'll see you on Sunday. <laughs> Okay. But people know how to pick and choose their attendance and their meetings. Well, bless God, we covered a lot of ground tonight, and I thank God for the opportunity to share and teach the Word of God. We have not covered it all, and so we, we ask you to uh, read ahead of time, and those of you who are taking the course for credit, um, we've sent out to you a schedule of reading assignments and if you have not received one please text me or send me an email I will make sure you get the syllabus and the assignments and for those of you who are not taking the course for credit but you want to see the assignments and the questions that should be answered please contact me and I'll be glad to share that with you praise God I'm going to turn the, uh, the, the class over to uh, my better half, Jackie Carter, and she'll give you any final instructions or, or ask, answer any questions or bring to our attention anything that needs, needs att attending to. Nothing in the chat room, no questions. Um, Athena shared the fact that Joshua... Um, in 515, he, he only hit one leg because he had lost the other one in battle. And she says how awesome he could battle with one foot. Who um, was that? Excuse me? I mean, with one leg. Um, but my response is that God can do wonderful things even though we aren't whole. He can still use us. Oh, yes. There are no other questions. Okay. I, I didn't get the question about the one leg. Athena was sharing that he had lost the leg in battle. Joshua? Yes. <clears throat> I haven't seen that in, in the scriptures. Uh, I haven't either. I haven't either. Uh, Jean, Dr. Pastor Bratton, Carter. have you seen that? No, that's not supported in Scripture. Okay. Uh, Dustina, you might want to review that and, and, and find out the source of that. If you come across anything in Scripture, let us know. But we don't believe that Joshua, right now, we have none of us have seen any evidence. Yeah, a pastor had talked about it. He was saying that because of the scripture of it saying that the angel had told him to remove the one shoe, they had took that as him only, only one having foot. one foot because to everyone else he said shoes. So that's that's what I was saying. I just got it from a pastor. So I'm not 100% sure. I've been trying to do research myself to see if it would if it coincides with it or not. But I haven't seen anything about him losing it in battle because, you know, he had to go around the wall for seven days. So, I mean, I don't know. It was just something that was told to me, and I didn't know if anybody might have some facts or anything to go along with it. Well, I'm, I'm not challenging. I'm not challenging what the uh, pastor said. But if God said had given us in his word that it was a lake it would have been a lake so if scripture said shoe and that's where we're you know that's what we believe shoe not leg because every word of, of God um, is is exactly what it is if he said shoe he didn't if he if, if it were a leg God would have said leg Okay. Also, when we when we go back, Dustina and Dr. Jean and class, um, removing a shoe from one foot, removing a shoe was a sign of a covenant agreement. Yes. Yes. Okay. Right. When when we look at the, we, we're going to see this in the Book of Ruth. 
where Boaz has to remove his shoe when he goes before the town uh, city elders to, to perform the rite of leveret marriage to actually become the, um, the redeemer for, for, for Ruth, okay? Boaz okay. has to remove one of his shoes and give that shoe to one of the elders as a sign of his agreement to do the will of God. Okay, so that's another way of looking at it, Dustina. I don't think, uh, I think Joshua had two feet, two legs. Um, that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, I was yeah, saying, yeah, yeah. you know, it's just what a pastor told me. So I, I'm glad that y'all clarified that for me because I've been looking and I've not found anything going go with pastors, what he said. So thank pastors, you. Pastors can say some weird stuff, can't they? <laughs> They have their moments. <laughs> and, 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 and we've got to, you know, you've got to test the word by the word. You've got to test the spirit yeah. by the spirit. Amen. Okay. Exactly. Um, Amen. Just Amen. like on Facebook, Facebook, one of my friends who pastors in Philadelphia, he said he had an old man in his congregation say, God never called the church to be tithers. Now, mm. a lot of mm. dumb stuff is said in mm. the church. And a lot of people believe the dumb stuff, a lot of dumb traditions. Now, that was dumb because when you read the Word of God, the Word of God specifies about tithing. I'm not saying that was dumb about the guy who said Joshua only had one foot. I think he did go right. off the deep I, th I think he did go off the deep end. Uh, uh, hope he wasn't a relative, Dustina. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no, it was just an old pastor I used to go to church with quite okay. a few years ago so it was just and like I said I've not found anything corroborate with what he said and okay. I was always curious about it so okay. that's why I said the pastor said it was not coming for me yeah. you probably got his information <laughs> twisted a little bit because to take to remove a shoe if for example Dustin if you and I agree <coughs> uh, on, on something and we go before the uh, township officials or the county officials and we make an agreement uh, and, 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 and instead of signing a contract as we do today in those mm -hmm. olden days a man would take off his shoe and give his shoe to the person he was making the contract with okay right. okay so when Joshua if, if the word the word only says shoe in that situation situation with Joshua, Joshua removed his shoe. Now Moses removed his shoes because he was mm -hmm. on holy ground. Yeah. It, now mm -hmm. this could have been an error in in translation, uh, and and Joshua could have removed his shoes, plural. But mm -hmm. even if he removed his shoe, it still means. I am in agreement with your covenant, covenant Lord. I'm taking my shoe off, and uh, uh, so we don't know. But uh, no, well, hopefully no, he hasn't been teaching that to too many people. There's no evidence that so. Joshua only had one leg. Okay. Amen. Right. Thank you. You okay, know, when it comes God. to when it comes to biblical figures and people, God is very detailed. For instance. He let us know that Moses was slow of speech. He let us know, for instance, um, Peter was apt to cursing. Mm -hmm. He let us know that Thomas was a doubter. Mm -hmm. He let us know about Gideon, um, that Gideon said, you know, I'm unfit. When it comes to biblical figures, God is very, very detailed. Mm -hmm. um, about their lives, and he gives us lots of information. So I'm going to um, just say this. If Joshua had one foot, God would have let us know. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and I also meantime, wonder if I'll, he... be, I'll be doing a little bit more research on that scripture, hopefully have something for you guys Maybe, next week, okay? Do you think he got them mixed up? Maybe with a different story. You know how sometimes when someone's trying to tell a story, they yes. get there, they cross it. Maybe, maybe it, that's that's what I'm saying, Cassandra. He might have crossed two different stories, or and, and a lot of times traditions get crossed and people become confused. 
So uh, yeah, we're, we're still and that may very person. well be because he has done that before. Yeah. He has quoted things and used a different scripture and it not be exactly what he was talking about. The story he was telling was true. He just had a different scripture with it. And so a lot of times <laughs> people would be like, hey, uh, no, it's this, you know, and raise their hand. But, yeah, it, 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 I mean, he could have messed it up, got confused with it. And he he was a very, very old man, too. So. <laughs> Old men can't become confused. I'm just thinking about Jackie and I were watching a movie last week, and and it was Eddie Murphy in the old movie Coming to America. Oh yeah. And, oh yeah. And, and the part, and you talking about confusing, <laughs> confusing information. Here's the part that I like this part, but it was a confusion. And the the preacher was saying, and Joshua, uh, 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 the Jordan River, and and Daniel. <laughs> Uh, was delivered from the lion's den. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego uh, were delivered from the fiery furnace. And Gilligan got off the island. Now, <laughs> now, now, that is a preacher twisting the truth, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, we get confused. And Gilligan got off the island. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, okay, Jackie says shut it down. Every time we've seen that, too. Every time we've seen that, too. Ladies and gentlemen, Gilligan, that is not preaching. That is not, okay, okay. But preachers can, if you've got to listen carefully. Listen carefully and discern and test the Spirit by the Spirit, okay? Yeah. Okay. And I believe that's why God says not to look to man for truth. Exactly. Seek the word for yourself. In, in the word. Because we don't word. always get it right at all. And Gilligan got off the island. Come on now. Okay. <laughs> now, Stina, would you close the side of prayer, please, dear? Yes, sir. I sure will. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for this online church and this ministry and this school of ministry, Father. We thank you for the word that you brought forth tonight, Lord. I pray that you be with all of the students, Lord, as we do our studies. And give us a refreshing, a new fire and spirit for you, Lord. Give us the knowledge and wisdom that we need as we continue through this semester, Lord. Make it flourish within our lives and to do according to your will, Father. And to give you all the glory and praise through it all. Be with everyone as they depart tonight. Keep everyone safe. Put a hedge of protection around them, Father. Just be with us. Forgive us where we fail you, Lord. And we love you and we praise your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. God bless.